Okay, this is section 6.1 in our textbook, the first nine questions that have to do with the multiplication of whole numbers with fractions. So our first question says this diagram models uh, three times six and one fifth. So there are one, two, three groups of six fifths. Each of those groups that I underlined there is six fifths. Another way we could actually say that is three times one and one fifth. They're both the same thing because this fraction right here is either six fifths, if you want to think of it that way, or alternatively, one and one fifth. But they're both the same thing. So when I ask the question three times six fifths, what I really want to ask myself is how many fifths do I have in total? I have one, two, three, four, five fifths, six fifths, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve fifths, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen fifths. So altogether, if I have one of those as being fifths, my answer would be three times six fifths would equal eighteen fifths, or one, two, three, and three fifths. Our second question, or sorry, our question four, because we skipped two and three. It says, what equation equation does each of these models represent? For pattern blocks, assume a hexagon represents one whole. So this shape right here is a hexagon, and that represents one. So each of these three shapes that make up the whole are going to represent what fraction? Anybody? Each of these is going to be a third. So if I have four groups of one-third, one, two, three, four, I can make... 1 plus an additional third, or more accurately, before I went to there, if I have, if I quadruple 1 third, I'd have 4 thirds, which is equal to 1 and 1 third. And finally, question B in number 4, uh, it says 2 fifths plus 2 fifths plus 2 fifths, or 2 fifths plus 2 fifths plus 2 fifths numerically instead of pictorially, would be 3 groups of 2 fifths. If I ask myself that magical question, how many fifths do I have in total? I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six fifths, or one, two, three, four, five, six fifths, or one and one fifth. In question five, again, we're continuing with the same idea. If we think about A, I can either think of it as being what two fractions are each of these? What two different ways to express those fractions? It can be six fifths. Or it can be, or sorry, not six fifths, six quarters, or five quarters, or one and a quarter. So we're going to go two groups of, and you can either say five quarters, or two groups of one and a quarter. Either way you look at it, it's the exact same question. When I solve it, if I solve it improperly, how many quarters do I have? I have one quarter, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten quarters. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That still makes sense. Or if it's a mixed fraction, I would have 2 and 2 quarters, which is the same thing as 2 and a half. Because really, when I think of this rectangle, I can think of it as being a half instead of 2 quarters. Our next question gives us a space on a number line between 0 and 1. It has six little spaces in here. One space, two, three, four, five, and six. So because it has six spaces, each of these numbers represents a sixth. So there would be a number line labeled. And if each jump is a sixth, I have four jumps or four groups of one sixth leaves me at four sixths. And if I think about what is four sixths in lowest terms, anybody? Two thirds. So if I was to cut it into thirds instead of sixths, one, two, three, four jumps leaves you at two thirds of a fraction, as a fraction. Question six asks us to uh, draw diagrams or diminutives and solve, so we'll go with A. Four groups of a half. I'm much luckier than you are because I can actually draw a half and then press the infinite cloner button. And then just go two halves, three halves, four halves. What doth four halves make? So if I said four times a half is how many halves? How many halves do I have? <laughs> four halves. How do I write four halves? 
No, that's simplified. How do I write 4 halves? 4 over 2. So this is 4 over 2, but we all know that that equals 2. And I can actually show it this way. Watch this. Hang on, hang on one second. Watch this. Through the magic of smart board technology. I'm going to ungroup those, hopefully. There we go. And I can move this one over here. And I can move this one over here. And we see why uh, 4 quarters equals 2. Amazing. Uh, question B says 3 times 7 tenths. So if I draw 7 tenths, so if I have 7 tenths drawn here, I'm going to triple it. So there's doubling it and tripling it. So if I triple 7 tenths, the question I want to ask myself is how many tenths do I have? Isaac, how many tenths do I have in total? 21 tenths. So as an answer, 21 tenths is acceptable. As an improper fraction, if I was to give three of these tenths to this one and give three of these tenths to this one, what is my answer as a mixed fraction? Based on the picture, two and two and one tenth. That's right. Two and one tenth. Everyone go with that? So for question C, we have two thirds, and it says five groups of two thirds. So if I multiply it by five, I'd have five groups of two thirds. How many thirds do I have in total here, Dawson? How many thirds are there in total here? There's one there, two. How many thirds do I have? There's five, one, two, three, four, five of them. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten thirds. So my answer is ten thirds as an improper. And if I rearrange these, oopsie daisy. Let's ungroup these. Then this would make one. This would make another. This over here would make another. What's my answer as a mixed fraction? Three and one third. Oops. All right, we had some technical difficulties there, so we're going to go on to the next question. So for question seven, what it's asking you to do here, Isaac, is solve these questions without having to draw them. So here's how I solve them. For question A, three times one eighth. If I envision an eighth and I triple it, how many eighths would I have in total? Three eighths is correct. Okay, we just had a fire alarm, so we're back now. Question six B says six groups of one quarter. So if you envision one quarter and you had six groups of them, if you ask yourself the question, how many quarters would you have in total? What's the answer? If you took a quarter and multiplied it by six, you'd have six quarters, which we'd write as six over four which is the lowest term mixed fraction, is 1 and 2 quarters, which is 1 and a half. Does that make sense to everybody without having to draw it? If I had 6 fifths, imagine what that looks like, and I doubled it, how many fifths would I have? 12 fifths, which is equal to 2 and 2 fifths. And finally, if I had 4 thirds and I doubled it, how many thirds would I have? 8 thirds. And 8 thirds is equal to 2 and two-thirds as a mixed fraction. Question 8 says, the width of a Canadian flag is half of its length. If the length is four meters long, how wide is the flag? So really, what we're asking this question is, if the width is half of this, half of this, well, we're used to seeing the whole number first when we model it. We know that we can, we can model it this way. But we also have learned Hayden, that the commutative property of mathematics states that the order in which you multiply two terms does not affect the product. So given that both of these will have the same answer, we can kind of think of it like this. If we, if we quadruple a half, how many halves would we have? We'd have four halves or two. And I thought of it this way, and I read it as being half of four. That's even easier, because what's half of four? Two. Either way we think about it, we get the same answer of the width is two meters. And finally, the last question says a minibus seats 12 people when full. It's three quarters full. How many people is So there's their bus. It seats 12 people. I think I'm doing this wrong. One, two, one, two, two, one. Did I do that wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, I got it right. There's 12 full seats. It's three quarters full. So if I ask you how many people is that going to be, what is three quarters of 12 or three quarters of 12? So if I think of it that way, if I multiplied 
three quarters by 12, how many quarters would I have? That's a tricky question. If I have three quarters and I multiply it by 12, how many quarters would I have? 36 quarters. So if I write the answer as being 36 quarters, what is that as a whole number? Hannah. It is 9. So therefore, if 3 quarters of 12 is 9, then there are 9 people on that bus. Does that make sense to everyone? And all we did is we said, well, uh, 3 quarters of 12. 3 quarters of 12 is like that. And if I think about it, using the community property, 12 times 3 quarters, how many quarters? 36 quarters. Your answer is 9.